out of Mostar. It's about 20 minutes or so on the bus and we've just come to explore and see what we can find here. What's already cool about this little town is when you're on the bus and you're arriving you look up into the mountains and you can see this big old fortress looking down at you. I'm going to turn the camera around and show you. <laughs> we could hear some random rustling in the trees. And this is what it is. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Are you too wild? Are you escape pets? What's already really nice here is just how gorgeous the mountains are. And you feel like you're right in the middle. Because it's not like in the city in Mosso, you feel like you're really close to them. And everywhere around as well, there's pomegranates growing from every other tree, which is really cool. Uh, but I don't know if they belong to people, otherwise I'd be quite tempted to have one and snack on it. When we got off the bus, we basically came down the first street that turned. We walked down, you can hear the water. That's not what I expected, no, it's not. <laughs> it looks like a water bridge or something, water, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, look at this. What have you done, Dan? Walk straight in there. <laughs> Why did you do that? Because I thought that was land still. <laughs> the water's so clear, we can't tell the difference between land and water. one thing that people come to Black Eye for and judging by the sudden more amount of people is that a good sentence? No, that's not a good sentence sudden by the sudden influx of people <laughs> and the little tourist shops I think we're getting close to it So this is it, the spot that people come here for. And if you want, you can even get a little boat ride into the tunnel with that guy there. This spot is just so overwhelming. I mean, it's amazing. You're right up next to the cliff face and it just feels so big. I mean, it obviously is. It doesn't feel very hospitable, but then if you look around, there's different things, like birds have made their homes in there, and there's trees growing out of random places, and you think, like, how, how do they get any nutrients? I don't know how they survive, but, but it's amazing. And there's, like, lots of little caves, and you can imagine all sorts of, like, creatures and bats and stuff living up there, and it just... Stuff like this just makes you feel very small, doesn't it? Makes me feel very small. It's amazing. I'm really beautiful. This river is the biggest spring of drinking water in Europe. Oh. That means that in one second it comes out around 43,000 liters of drinkable water every second. Wow. It's 9 degree temperature and you can drink straight from the river because the whole town is using this water. Like when you open tap, this is the water that gets out. Wow. So it's good to drink. Here on this right side, it's 10 meters deep this side. Wow. Other side is deep. 4 meters. And here in front of us, this area, it's around 40 meters deep. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta take this. So we've just come off that little boat ride that you can have into the cave. And actually, it was really interesting. The guy gave us a little talk while we went round. And apparently there were people living in those big caves that you can see behind us like three or four thousand years ago. Because archaeologists found super old bones and stuff up there, which was really interesting. 
What did you learn? About the plaque above, above the cave, which people built, put there in like 1900 something, I can't remember the year. When it was like a kingdom? Yeah, but and like welcoming the king, and then the partisans after the World War II. Shot it down, it. Yeah, yeah, smashed it up. And it's all kind of just hanging there. Another really interesting thing about the caves is that although this looks like the source of the river, actually they've had divers come in and there's loads and loads of tunnels and caves inside the rock. It's actually, the guy was telling us, quite hollow. So you can go for hundreds of metres and still not find the end and the source of the river, which is really interesting and amazing. And apparently, uh, somewhere further up, there's another little stream um, and another that becomes a river and what they did years ago is they put some paint in it and uh, Left it and then a couple of days later the paint was coming out of this tunnel So that must be one of the sources and it's starting to come through but because there's so many caves There's just loads and loads of sources um, And nobody really knows how far they go <laughs> it's cheaper to get a coffee here than it is in Mostar. So cheap, in fact, that you can get the bus here from Mostar, get the coffee, and still save money. <coughs> la la. The cafe was really busy three minutes ago, then calls to prayer happened, and everybody's come out of the cafe and move themselves into the mosque instead. We were walking past the mosque just as prayers finished. So we hung around for a little bit and then we're invited to come inside. So we went and had a little look around the mosque and it's called Solomon the First Mosque. And if we're right, then we think it's named after the same Solomon that the big mosque or one of the big mosques in um, Istanbul is named after as well. It's very small but very nice. And they're people were friendly. Yeah, people were really nice. And we made some from Peckham. <laughs> we did, just down the road. And um, it's celebrating its 500 year anniversary next year, and so they're all very proud of it. Before we head off again, we're just having a little walk through the cemetery. Um, it's in a beautiful spot, it's really peaceful. So we're just going to have a little walk around. I'll tell you the true reason why we're here. It's because the guy on the boat told us that there's lots of turtles living here, or tortoises, or whatever they are. Um, so I was hoping to spot a couple before we go, but no luck so far. I think it's fair to say that Blagai probably isn't a full day's worth of a day trip. I think lots of people come here on the way to a couple of other places, but it's definitely worth a couple of hours to walk around. It's a really beautiful spot, so we've definitely enjoyed ourselves here. But um, on our way back to Mostar, we're hoping to stop off at one more place, um, if we can find it. waiting at a bus stop for a little while but it was telling us we just missed a bus which we didn't think we had because we didn't see one go past us at all in the opposite direction um, so we're not sure how reliable the timetable is so we've just decided to walk for a little bit and hopefully at some point a bus will come past us because it's a little bit of a walk to Mostar um, but while we're walking we can just enjoy the view and the sights the place we were gonna possibly try and go to is an old, what is it, an aircraft hangar where they used to keep uh, aircrafts during the war but um, with these buses being so unreliable and a bit higgledy-piggledy we're not quite sure whether or not it's worth getting off the bus to go and look at it then to come back and find we can't get back into town for ages um, but maybe we'll still do that, we'll see how that goes, but it would have been interesting. I think if you've got a car, it's definitely worth popping into and having a look. As is the castle, if you've got a car, because I don't think walking it's an option, really. A 
don't know how we get ourselves into these situations, but we always seem to end up on the side of the road walking for miles before we get anywhere. And it's happened again, we've just kind of been walking. No buses. Um, the pavement's run out. So now we're just going to be walking on the side of the road, hoping that a bus is going to come past at some point. If not, it's like another eight kilometers to Mostar, which I guess is doable, but it's warm. It's always a warm day when this happens as well. <sighs> So that concludes our time in Mostar and also our time in Bosnia and for me Bosnia has been a massive surprise because I went in with no expectations. It's been good fun. It's been good fun but it's also gorgeous. Bosnia is so beautiful. So if you ever get a chance to go, I wholeheartedly say go. It's really good. <laughs>